What's up everybody? Now this is part B to the changes that I made in the inventory system. Where we left off is in the dictionary part. When we go to instantiate. If you do not have that. If you did not watch the first part of this one. Please go watch it. Because there's a lot of great explanation in there. And I don't think you guys would appreciate me repeating a lot of it. Which I probably end up will anyway. But, you know, it's just the way it is. But anyway, let's get into this and let's go all up in the grill of this. So, when we iterate, we're checking for keys, okay, for the name. If it equals false, then we do our listing and all that. Google. So, inventory.name. What does that mean? Well, inventory.name is very, very simple and elegant. Because we go into our scriptable object. We have a name right here. Okay? This name is unique to this scriptable object. Okay? Which the one that we probably want to talk about is this one, the m4.asset. Because I use a dictionary, it cannot use this string more than once. It tries to add it, it will go and start failing. And your game will be broken. List doesn't care if you have multiples. But the, the thing about this functionality is... If I actually had more than one of these, the the beauty of it is later on in this, if it's true, well, guess what? If it's an else statement, if it's an else statement, which, like I said, this is unique to the name, so I will only be able to add this to the dictionary one time. Which is fan freaking tastic. Okay. So we go into our coder thing. Okay, this is false. Alright. We can't serialize this goopball menu thingy here. Okay. Inventory equipment is a scriptable object that's got freaking game objects and all kinds of other stuff in there so yeah we can't be doing that but 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 what we can do is add a unique version of it one okay now if we have this name right here which is going to be unique one time only thing we're going to have new data item data we're going to pass it temp which is the game object button and the inventory itself okay inventory which is the inventory equipment okay these so basically i'm using the name as a lookup okay and then i use this data right here as the stuff that I need it to point to. So this will be unique. I can pull up and remove this if I want or anything like that. And that's what I'm using it for. Now if I already have the name in my dictionary, I can use an else statement. Guess this is where I allow stacking numbers like 50 steel and I hit cap lock or something yeah so if it's already in the dictionary then guess what I can always just bloop there you go done I can always put some type of logic in here later on but I only care about just one of these because it wouldn't be very hard to make another scriptable object that just says M4 0, M4 1, M4 2, 
I mean, it, it really would. And just ignore anything else. Or write some other logic like, hey, when you go to pick up a weapon that you already have, or armor that you already have, it fully heals your gun, or you get parts, steel, uh, iron, and some kind of bonus thing. Like, maybe you get some uh, a new skin or something. Okay? You can basically put anything here that you really want. Okay? As long as it, it makes reasonable sense. Now, I wrote this. This is not important right now, but it will be later. This is experimental. And this is kind of... Kind of important. So to remove something, which I haven't done something like this, like a button or anything like that yet, but we do inventory equipment, a variable. Okay, then we go item dot remove dot item. Okay, this goes in our dictionary, gets the inventory equipment, the actual equipment itself. Okay, then we go inventory dot remove temp. So this removes it from the dictionary. Oh, actually, not the dictionary, the list. Okay, so this is removed from the list now. Okay, so when we do the game object, we get the button now. Okay, the button that used to be our inventory thing. Okay, now we do items dot remove. Based on the to remove, what's to remove? To remove, oh, the string, we remove it based on its string as well. So item dot remove, oh, yeah, we remove the dictionary reference as well. But see, the go is the game object that we needed for the button and we destroy the button now this could be um, this could be an easy uh, integration to an object puller we already did one and everything but right now I'm just going to destroy it later on if we have problems with garbage collection and stuff coming from the inventory like adding and removing, I can put it right back in because we already have it written. I just don't get it, got it right now because a lot of people probably aren't, didn't even watch that video. So, yeah. But in the start of my new inventory, I also go to the player container, inventory reference, and reference this. Uh, you see these callbacks? These are just actions where I can just write in them. Okay? Nothing big, and then it just calls and invokes them. I do this a lot of times just to make it more clear on what's going on. I'll do callback, boom, this. Sometimes I'll even make an array of these and assign everything, and then just push an array, boom, done. Not a big deal, but um, it's it's the same thing as doing something like this, which we'll probably be doing something else later with that. But it's important to know this functionality. What this does is kind of like an initial thing. Make sure everything's instantiated the way it needs to be. Now, for our Item data, you could already probably guess what this is. This is like a containing object, okay? We have a game object, which is a button, and then inventory equipment. Now, the reason why I did this is because I don't want... I want to use the string to look up everything, okay? Because I'm going to have a unique string for every, like, inventory thing. You know, I don't want some stupid iteration through a list every single time when I go to do a weapon 
Okay, it's it's dumb. I mean, I don't want to iterate, 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 because that will be pretty slow. And comparing and all that stuff. That, that and all this does is takes the game object button, gives me a class to reference, you know, use as the value. And we just keep track of the button, the item, go, and I just assign it. That's all it does. I mean, it's not that big of a, uh, a thing. I don't need this stuff in here. We just need reference to the Unity game engine, and that's it. So it creates a new one for every single one of these. Now, if you're thinking, when it comes to serialization, it's going to be really, really easy. Because that's the reason why I got this. Saving the names. So we get a list of strings. Well, because I'm resource.loading, I don't get clones. I don't get that word clone inside of there. So for, for every item in here, I add the value.key. Which is a string. Okay. So it becomes very important. I'll, I'll have an array of strings. Which are. What we're going to use to load our list back up. Okay. So a list of strings. Very serializable. Secondly. When we do weapon pickups. Guess what. We don't have to, we can either do a pickup where it throws a string in there and we load it at runtime, like we do the serialization, or we can actually just pass it to inventory equipment itself, okay? It doesn't care if you give it the string version or that. We just can't have a, an object.clone. Which resource loading gets rid of. When you pull it out of memory, it will give you the original. If you instantiate something into the world, it gives you a clone. Very, very, very different. And that's the very important part about it. I'll probably do a video on just the different versions of that. Okay? But that is pretty much it, guys. And... I think, oh, when we do the saving system, it'll be very easy for us to save because these references will be able to reference everything that we need. See, the player container makes it a whole lot easier. And it's static. It's always there, so it's always beautiful for that reason by itself. But the soldier, yep, yeah, we got... We got some new stuff going in there. Our updater, our data container was pretty easy. Right, guys? And now we got a menu system that this initial load, every time it enables when we pull it up, it will do this. Okay? It will iterate and give us all the stuff that we need into our menus. Pretty much based on this list right here, the dictionary will keep us from getting all those stupid clones and stuff like that. So if we already have stuff, it's just going to ignore it pretty much. And yeah, it's going to be super nice. Super, super nice. And we're and the thing about this is to these references and stuff like this is very simple to run because we're at runtime we can let these get big we can we can have quite a few things in here we're just going to load these back up if anything happens based on its strength so. When these get huge and everything else and the player ends up quitting and then coming back for any reason, 
then it will only upload up the data that it needs. Okay? Because we're basing it off the strings for the dictionary. So this list can go to a hundred or whatever it is. And it won't matter because it's only going to load up what it needs from the serializer that we're going to write. And, um, oh, the also the great thing about this versus what everybody else usually does is I don't have to list every single piece of equipment in in our database or anything like that we don't have to list anything okay we just have to make sure the item actually exists which we probably will do something of the sort which is going to be our we're going to do that somewhere oh it's when we write the serializer if nothing comes back then we just throw up an error or some type of debug.log thing but there is stuff to to mitigate that too it's actually quite easy but uh yeah i think that's it guys um i think i hit everything that we should have had like i said this player container is going to get rid of a lot of those object.find type stuff. Oh, man, it's so not worth it to have that stuff around. And like I said, this names this is just another class that I did just to take the i pointer, handler, exit and stuff. Because all it does is have an action and does this basic stuff. It doesn't assign the action. And I got tired of having all this extra stuff floating around like extra words and stuff so i just put a, a min uh inventory menu item as the class and then the stuff that actually does the work is here okay so i just basically cut out the the basic crap that every one of these will have just so later on we don't have like a huge script because inheritance is beautiful for that. We just put all that in one class. That's, you know, the basic coloration and stuff. And that, that's pretty much it. I mean, it runs just the same. It's not like it's going to do anything. It just means I got another file in, in the project somewhere. Not that big of a deal. It really isn't. And because we're not using a pure like binary formatter then we're going to be able to work on st stuff pretty pretty efficiently okay uh no argument where no argument where what really what happened here huh that should work just fine I just had it working huh go time Game controller. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Why am I getting air now? 
player container prefab equals selected. Oh, 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 because I changed this and it probably nulled it out. Okay, yep. Didn't it? It probably nulled it out. Yep, it did. I was like, what? What? See, it's what happens. Temp player is the thing. Okay, temp player. Congratulations, temp player. You're back on the auction block. Yeah, I took it from public and put it private and deleted its stuff. And that's, that's bull, man. There we go. Had me freaked out for a second. But yeah, there you go. We got our inventory thing and we can jump and all that good stuff. Whee! Yeah, I know. I got to adjust the variables for like running and stuff like that. But in all honesty, that's not like a severe problem. That's something that you guys can do and I just like not. Reload. Wee. All right. So, note yourself when you make something maybe public to private, it does not transfer the data that used to be there so much. So, yeah, kind of sucks. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys like the changes. I hope some of it made sense because some of it may be a little new concept for some. But thanks for watching. Peace out, everybody. And I'll see you in the next episode where we... Uh, I'm not sure what we'll do. Not sure. I think there's a few things that I want to change. Uh, maybe it's going to be... Uh, Oh, it, it'll probably be selling some of our weapons. Yeah, we'll probably be selling weapons. There you go. But uh, take care, guys, and peace out, everybody.